Welcome to Well.com. I have Mr. Jason Becker with me today from Valencia College. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Bob, for having me. We're going to argue, cuss, and discuss about a feature that ESOB has on their 205 called AC TIG Offset. What do we know about it? Well, with offset, we can change our positive and negative amperages. So unlike with balance, we can change the time, the amount of time that we have per cycle. Uh, with offset, what that's going to allow us to do is set a predetermined amperage for our AC uh, for the peak on positive as well as on negative. Okay. Sounds confusing. It is. Are you going to get me lost and confused? Yes. You are? But we're going to get you back out. I just, I just want to show <laughs> I just wanted to show something simple like what the major effect would be like max out positive, max out negative and show the viewers that there is a there is an effect here. A couple of things that are going on. So when we want to get started, we we'll just do a baseline what everything typically is going to be if we set everything at, uh, at zero. Keep our balance at about 85. Yeah. So I ran one at zero, just straight up like you're talking about, nothing, no, no action whatsoever. <clears throat> what about on the I ran side? another one at max positive, or, you know, we have this at 150 amps, so we turned it to the 55 positive offset that we could max it out to, and I came up with this huge frost line. I mean, that's wide, that's noticeable. It was running about 205 amps, right? Yeah, and then I ran one at the the total bottom side of it, just the opposite, minus 55. And everything was narrow. And I also noticed that I was actually melting this bead on here with on 3 8 aluminum, but I'm only using a 1 16th tungsten. Now you'd think at a, with a 1 16th tungsten, I'd just destroy it with amperage. Yeah, well, I mean, typically a 1 16th tungsten, the carrying capacity of that electrode is going to be about 80 to 120 amps. But yeah. you're telling me you got 205 amps on DC negative and DC positive, and that's the results you're coming up with, and you didn't tear up your tungsten? I didn't destroy it. I mean, it, you know, it did the normal thing on the tip of the tungsten. Okay, so right Sounds now, here's, here's the setup. 1 16th E3 tungsten, alternating current, pure argon, about 35 cubic feet an hour, 30 cubic feet per hour, uh, 150 amps, 100 hertz, and we're at 85 on the on the imbalance. That's okay. just the imbalance. So we're spending a lot of time on the imbalance, and that's how we're maintaining the point. 85% on negative. But now this the the power of the arc that we're getting between positive offset and negative offset. That's what I want to discuss because I also ran this on an eighth inch clip. And I like blast it. I was, look at that crater in there. Mm -hmm. I'm like blasting through this thing on the negative side. On the positive side, it's real soft. It's like right on the surface. It's more cleaning action. Yeah, big old wide frost line. Oh, yeah. But it, but it's a, I'm not putting all that power into mm -hmm. the deep driving it into the material. So, I you know we do this. I can I can see some benefits of doing some tubing welds and increasing speeds and stuff. So let's go through and run some real quick. All right. Okay, Jason, here we go. First one, we ran a baseline at zero setting, no offset whatsoever. Right. Uh, amperage, 150, 15% cleaning or 85% EN on that imbalance. And this is what we got. Medium frost line, nothing special. Uh, no, it really wasn't getting a lot of melt. It was mm -hmm. like very surface, just right. surface stuff. And this is the tungsten that we ran with it. And it's got a little bitty baby ball on the end of it, and that's about it. Okay. Still in pretty the decent shape. Yeah, it's pretty subtle. It's pretty small. I mean, the main thing is we're not destroying a, a 1 16th tungsten. Mm -hmm. The second one we did, big noticeable difference in frost line. Re super wide. I mean, it's twice as wide as the other one. Oh, man. It's, uh, it's really wide. I slowed down a little bit down here. That's why we got a big mega ball out here. But just d down through the center of it, look how much frost line we got in it. And this is the tungsten that I ran that with. 
It's still pretty clean. Not a lot of difference between baseline and this one. This last one, the bead is a lot narrower. Frost line, I, well, I'll take that back. The frost line is way noticeably smaller. It's yeah. barely outside the bead itself. And this is the tungsten. So looking at all three of them, I'd have to look at them with a photographer's loop or something and look at them real close. But I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference in anything. They're still usable. That's no, they're, the deal. They're very, I mean, they're very similar. You told uh, me, you, you told me that I could weld AC at 150 amps with a 1 16th with a 1 16th and I would have laughed and said no I don't think so mm -hmm. scooter I'm I'm grabbing 332 you know There's, uh, you know so anyway I took one more tungsten and ran two more beads and one of them was I bet that's still hot well, I can pick it up taste it see what it smells like so this one was the max positive uh, what was it, plus 55 or whatever we had plus left 55. on there. So we're at, 50, we're at 150 amps. We, we turn it up to max positive. 205 amps. 205, so it's 55. Wide frost line. I do have a little bit of a bump down here when I terminated the weld. But I wasn't getting into the surface of the plate or the backside of the plate. We have a... You tell you got a penetration profile in there, but I mean, it's nothing. Barely a ridge. Right. I mean, I can feel it. I had these propped up so that they're on, they're, there was nothing underneath mm -hmm. them. Check this out. I ran this last one and did the same thing. We just went max negative. And not only do I have a serious depression in the skin of this, look what happened on the backside. It's like it all just sunk to the backside so much more power in the art punching that one. using offset. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things. We're using small diameter tungsten. We're not destroying the tip. We're changing things so that we can control this bead depth of fusion, it looks like. I can see some real benefits in getting into cope tubing and getting back in places or doing tanks, small, thin stuff where we're buttering the weld versus driving it in there for a fillet weld right. or something. Holy smoke. I, mean, I, I definitely see the benefits a lot of times you do with the AC work, especially on seriated tungsten. You know, you get a lot of tungsten cracking at the end. All right. <clears throat> but I mean, it's, yeah. it's definitely but, definitely a difference in there if you can take that 1 16th and I mean, you're still ready to, I mean, you probably weld all day with that. This would be a good one to cut and etch with filler wire. Mm -hmm. You get that travel speed about the same. Weld up a bunch of samples and cut, do that profile across there. but. You know, here's the here's the main thing I'm impressed with: small diameter tungsten weld profile control, and then dial in that impact mm -hmm. zone. We either get a big frost zone, big cleaning, or we get driving deep in there and keep that small and tight. Like we we were talking off camera, and you said something about doing castings and yeah, I mean aluminum cast aluminum. You know, you're definitely going to want a lot more of that cleaning action. You know what I've tried on uh, when doing castings and stuff like that with aluminum is just to switch it over to DC uh, positive, and actually just without any filler metal, just kind of run like a small autogenous weld just over that welding area, and bring up all those impurities. Yep. Hit it with a wire brush. You do that three or four times. Hit it with you're, some uh, dechlorinated brake cleaner, and it's ready to go. You're gonna you're gonna waste the tungsten anyway, and redress it, right? Mm -hmm. Tung does the tungsten get pretty bad? Oh, yeah, it gets quick? it gets bad, but you it pulls out. Pulls you're sacrificing. Out all yeah, you yeah. sacrifice. I mean, you already know that going ahead, but that's I mean, a, that's a the good cleaner tip. you can get the uh, the casting, you know, the better off your weld's gonna be. It's a good. It's tip. a lot easier to waste a little bit of that tungsten than you know it is to deal with the cracked part after you get done welding it. Well, I learned a lot here, and I hope the viewers did too. I'm sure, sure appreciate did. the viewers' support. Yeah, definitely. Without the viewers, none of this would be you guys possible. Are, you guys are too cool out there. I hope you learned something here. I, I guarantee you I did. If you need help with something like that, if you don't understand it, these these features are, are here inside the machines, and they shouldn't be confusing. I know we've had some technical questions pop to us like, I can't get this machine set or something. I think people are overthinking it. Mm -hmm. uh, get yourself a baseline that you're comfortable with and add a little bit at a time. But here's proof in the pudding of what actually happens maxed one way and the other. So that should give you some background knowledge on how to use this offset in the ESOB 205. Thanks for watching Weld.com. Jason Becker, ladies and gentlemen. Bob Moffitt. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram and thank you very much for your support.
Let's do some Welton. Quinn. Using some hoof from. And this one is going to be amplitude. Offset. What do we know about amplitude? Aesop calls it offset. <laughs> <laughs> they do? 